Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is unit conversion. Our objective is to learn to convert quantities to different units of measurement. Imagine the joy you'd feel having washed ashore alive after a particularly brutal shipwreck. Similarly, imagine the revulsion you'd feel upon realizing you've washed upon the shores of an isolated and stubborn society that does not use the metric system. Luckily, such a situation is unlikely to occur since only a small minority of backwards countries do not use the metric system. On the remote chance you ever deal with these savages, you must learn to convert their archaic and unwieldy measurements into metric or other usable equivalents. There exist several different methods of unit conversion. Among them, one, look it up on the internet. This method is admittedly super easy, but sometimes the internet isn't available. Two, use a conversion factor. I don't recommend this method because it necessitates a user memorized long strings of number. And three, probably the easiest way to convert between one system units to another is to multiply that quantity you wish to convert by one. Allow me to demonstrate. Some of you might be under the impression that there is only one, but that is far from the truth. There in fact exist infinite flavors of one. For example, one over one could rightly be called one, as could two over two, 10 over 10, or following this line of thought, 312 over 312, or elephant over elephant. Long story short, you can make a one out of anything divided by itself. As long as that thing above the fraction line, i.e. the numerator, is equal to that thing below it, i.e. the denominator, you have yourself a one. We can use this fact to our advantage when performing unit conversion. You're no doubt aware that 12 eggs are considered one dozen. One dozen is 12 eggs, and 12 eggs are one dozen. These are two equal quantities. If in fact these two terms represent equal quantities, we can make a one using two different systems of units. Consider the ratio one dozen over 12 eggs. If one dozen is 12 eggs and 12 eggs are one dozen, this is a one. If we wanted to convert a given quantity of eggs into an equivalent amount of dozens, one could multiply the quantity of eggs by one, where one is chosen to be one dozen over 12 eggs. The unit I want dozens is on top. The unit I don't want eggs is on the bottom. Consider a giant pile of 552 eggs. Let's say we want to know how many dozen egg cartons we need to pack this pile of eggs into for shipment to the store. Multiply by one. 552 eggs times one dozen over 12 eggs. Units of eggs cancel out and we're left with 46 dozen. This method also works in reverse. Consider the ratio 12 eggs over one dozen. If one dozen is 12 eggs and 12 eggs are one dozen, this is also a one. If we wanted to convert a given quantity of dozens in an equivalent amount of individual eggs, one could multiply this quantity of dozens by one, where one is chosen to be 12 eggs over one dozen. The units I want, eggs is on top, the unit I don't want, dozens is on the bottom. Let's say we wanted to know how many individual eggs are inside 72 dozen. Multiply by one. 72 dozen times 12 eggs over one dozen, units of dozens cancel out, and we're left with 864 individual eggs. This is a very easy trick as long as you stay organized. The conversion ratio must be arranged such that the units you want are on top and the units you don't want are on the bottom. The units you don't want should cancel out and the units you want should remain. Let's try a couple illustrated examples using this method. Consider two different means of measuring power, time rate expenditure or production of energy, the watt and the horsepower. 746 watts is equivalent to one horsepower. We'll examine power and energy in greater detail in later lectures. Right now, we just want to be able to convert between these two systems of units. Let's say you hop in your buddy's 60 horsepower boat for a day of gator hunting. At peak power output of 60 horsepower, what is the equivalent power output of the boat in watts? The unit you want is watts. The unit we don't want is horsepower. The one we need to multiply is 746 watts over one horsepower. 60 horsepower times 746 watts over one horsepower. Units of horsepower cancel out, and we're left with 44,760 watts. If we express this number in proper engineering format, it would be written as 44.76 kilowatts. If we're asked to round this to the nearest tenth place, we could say 60 horsepower is roughly equivalent to 44.8 kilowatts. Let's try this method in reverse. Consider a motor capable of exerting 186.5 watts of output in the loaded condition. Let's say we want to know this motor's equivalent output in units of horsepower. The unit we want is horsepower. The unit we don't want is watts. The one we need to multiply by is one horsepower over 746 watts. 
186.5 watts times one horsepower over 746 watts. Units of watts cancel out and we're left with 0.25 horsepower. Now, before you rush off and express this answer in proper engineering format as 250 milli horsepower, let me explain something to you that you might or might not be aware of. You'd think every system of units would use engineering prefixes to make expressing unusually large and usually small numbers in a compact readable format, but that is most assuredly not the case. Units like horsepower, brasses, barns, board feet, barrels, hectares, hogheads, hours, minutes, seconds, inches, feet, miles, fathoms, furlongs, gallons, and grains don't use engineering prefixes and are written as regular numbers. Remember those? Regardless of how small or big they are. 0.25 horsepower would be represented as plain old 0.25 horsepower. More than likely, it'll be expressed as the fractional equivalent of a quarter horsepower. Now, I don't like this foolishness any more than you, but I will reluctantly admit that it does have its uses. First, it's a sanity check on our conversion. If one horsepower is 746 watts, it stands to conjecture 186.5 watts will be less than one horsepower or some smaller fraction than one. In fact, that's what motors less than one horsepower are called fractional motors, i.e. something smaller or a fraction of one horsepower. Motors having an output of one quarter horsepower, as in our example, one third, a half, or three quarter horsepower would all be considered fractional horsepower motors. In contrast, integral horsepower motors are motors that have an output of one horsepower or greater. For example, two, five, or 10 horsepower motors would be considered integral motors. Also, the unit horsepower is a great indication of safety. Think about it. Can a horse kill you? You're damn right a horse can kill you. A horse could smash you to a bloody pulp. Be extremely careful when you're working on actuators greater than one horsepower or 746 watts. Returning to our example, could a quarter of a horse kill you? Like, could a kick from one leg of a four-legged horse kill you? Yes, yes it could, depending on where you get hit. Be careful when you're working with quarter horsepower motors. In fact, be careful of any device capable of exerting power in any portion of your anatomy you wish to keep in working order. Moving on. While we're dealing with horsepower and watts, let's discuss multi-step unit conversion. As you are no doubt aware, one horsepower equals 746 watts. One horsepower also happens to equal 550 foot-pounds force per second in the U.S. customary system of units. Given a 186.5 watt motor, or a quarter horsepower motor, how much output in units of foot-pounds force per second can it produce? We're presented with two options, both of which should yield the same result. Option one, two-step conversion. First step, convert watts to horsepower. As we previously demonstrated, 186.5 watts times one horsepower over 746 watts, units of watts cancel out, units of horsepower remain, yields 0.25 horsepower. Step two, convert units of horsepower to foot-pounds force per second. The unit we want is foot-pounds force per second. The unit we don't want is horsepower. 0.25 horsepower times 550 foot-pounds force per second over one horsepower, units of horsepower cancel out, and units of foot-pounds force per second remain, yields 137.5 foot-pounds force per second. Option two, single step conversion. If one horsepower is 746 watts and one horsepower is also equal to 550 foot-pounds force per second, it stands to conjecture 746 watts is equal to 550 foot-pounds force per second. Using this equality, we can cut out the intermediate conversion to horsepower. The unit we want is foot-pounds force per second. The unit we don't want is watts. 186.5 watts times 550 foot-pounds force per second over 746 watts, units watts cancel out, and units of foot-pounds force per second remain, similarly yielding 137.5 foot-pounds force per second. Use whatever method you wish, as long as you get the correct answer. Before we test ourselves with some illustrated examples, I want to show you how I'm performing unit conversion on the TI-89 in exponential format engineering. Since some of the systems do use engineering prefixes, and some don't, you might struggle interpreting results unless you remember this simple fact. While in exponential format engineering, the TI-89 expresses every number in engineering format, regardless of what format you feed it. If your chosen system of units uses engineering prefixes, just take what the calculator gives you. If your chosen system of units does not use engineering prefixes, you got to convert the answer back into the base unit. Allow me to demonstrate. Consider our first example. We were asked to convert 60 horsepower to watts. Watts uses engineering prefixes. 60 times 746 yields 44.76 E3 on the TI-89. 
E3 is the prefix kilo. So this is 44.76 kilowatts. Again, if we were asked to round this to the tenths place, it'd be roughly 44.8 kilowatts. Let's say we're being asked to convert this to an equivalent amount of foot pounds force per second. Foot pounds force per second do not use an engineering prefixes, so we're gonna have to convert the calculator's answer back into the base units. Your choice, horsepower to foot pounds force per second or watts to foot pounds force per second. Either method should yield the same result. I'm gonna convert watts to foot pounds force per second. The unit we want is foot pounds force per second. The units we don't want is watts. 550 foot pounds force per second over 746 watts is one. Enter 44.76 EE3, or better yet, use the previous results. This will save you from re-entering data. Notice you gotta use the unrounded entry 44.76 E3, not the rounded answer 44.8 E3. You must use the complete unrounded entry for the most accurate results. Multiply this by 550, divided by 746. Press enter. The calculator says 33 E3. If foot pounds force per second employed engineering prefixes, you'd use a kilo prefix, but they don't. So we need to convert this back to the base unit. 33 E3 means 33 times 10 to the third or 33 times a thousand. So our output expressed in the base units of foot pounds force per second is regular old 33,000 foot pounds force per second. Dig, I think the hardest thing for folks new to this game is determining which units use engineering prefixes and which ones don't. This will take some time and exposure. For now, don't worry about it because I'm gonna tell you when it's appropriate to apply engineering prefixes and when it isn't. 